Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopijana Vallabha Girivaradhari Jaya Gopijana Vallabha Girivaradhari Yasura Nandana Padjana Ranjana Yasura Nandana Padjana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Anjaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Shri the Bhopad Ki Jai Sunday Krishna Fest Ki Jai Shri Mid Bhagavatam Ki Jai Hari Krishna everybody Thank you for coming on this Nice sunny day in Pacific Beach. You're giving up party time. <laughs> Get extra credit. Um, so tonight, we're going to speak about the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is central to this movement and central to the process of Krishna consciousness that Srila Prabhupada taught following in the footsteps of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and their sincere followers. So, first a little background. Uh, Srila Prabhupada, as you may know, uh, was a, a pure Vaishnav, completely pure, who met his spiritual master in 1922, I believe it was, in Calcutta. He had Srila Prabhupada been raised in a pure uh, Vaishnava family, especially his father, Gaur Mohan Day, uh, raised him. His mother wanted to send him to England so he could become a lawyer. And his father said, no, 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 no. Better that he learn the, how to play the madanga. And so he became... <laughs> so his father really uh, watched over him, and he had the, his own Jagannat Rathayatra when he was a child. He put it on. His father bought him a little cart, and the, the, he and the other kids in the neighborhood were doing Rathayatra. Uh, right there in Calcutta. So then, then uh, Srila Prabhupada got married, and uh, then he met his spiritual master, and he also had the kid on the way, or one child already. Uh, so he was a little, that, oh, I could have been one of your sannyasis, but now, you know, the thing. I said, no, no, you can still preach. And so uh, Prabhupada was, was given the uh, assignment to spread Krishna consciousness to uh, in English, abroad. Uh, this was Lord Chaitanya's uh, prediction that his name would be heard in every town and village all over the world. Well, uh, of course, India was the, was the first uh, place it had to be heard. And Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, his spiritual master, he had 64 Amats. He had a big organization, the uh, Gaudi Amat, which Srila Prabhupada was part of. But that uh, didn't include the rest of the world. So, uh, 
eventually Srila Prabhupada, he was distributing this little Back to Godhead magazine, writing it in English and distributing. He had retired. It's a long story. You can read it in the Srila Prabhupada Lilamrita, a beautiful book, uh, a biography of Srila Prabhupada written by Satsuta Das Goswami, with Prabhupada's permission. And uh, so he was, he was printing, somehow printing this uh, BTG, a few pages of, of newsprint, and then he was distributing himself and managing somehow. And one of his friends said, you know, these, these little uh, papers can be easily thrown away, but if you print some big books, they'll be permanent. You know? So he took that to heart, and he started working on producing an trans English translation of Srimad Bhagavatam. It took him a year or two to just do the first volume, and with that first volume, he was able to go to some well-to-do businessmen who were Vaishnavs and, and solicit funds to produce the second volume and the third volume. It took him four years to do the, to the, the, the first three volumes. And then he felt he had ammunition. He, had, he, he could go to the West with this English first candle. And uh, it's a wonderful story. I'm not going to go into the details how he you know, got the P form to get out of India. And uh, he found a sponsor who was there in Pennsylvania. Who, you know, he wasn't going to be a ward of the state, so that was assured. And he, he went over there. And uh, then eventually, it's a wonderful story how he came to New York and eventually uh, started the movement in 26 Second Avenue. It was first incorporated in July of 1966. And what was Prabhupada teaching from? His first canto. Now, he was also giving Bhagavad Gita classes, but it was all just, he didn't have an English Bhagavad Gita. He was just translating and you know, giving commentary. But the, the devotees there were reading this first canto. And this was getting them enlivened in devotional service to surrender. So I'd like to just go over now a little bit of, uh, of the uh, historic importance of the Bhagavad Purana, Srimad Bhagavatam, which you see here. These are only 10 of the 18 volumes. It was, it's quite massive. I had the good fortune to, to work on the last six volumes of this, this uh, production. Srila Prabhupada uh, wasn't able to finish it. In 1977, he finished the last chapter, chapter 13 of the 10th canon, which has 90 chapters. And uh, a few years later, I was able to join a nice team of Gopi Puranadana Prabhu, a very wonderful friend of mine, a Sanskrit scholar in Ridhyananda Das Goswami in Miami, to complete the book, 77 chapters of the 10th canto and some of the 11th and 12th. So just to, I try to impress upon you the, the all importance of this Shastra, this uh, scripture, in the pantheon of Gaudiya scriptures. Uh, and how important it is, and how it came to be. So, uh, Vyasadeva, this is the beginning of the Bhagavatam, first canto, and uh, after some verses at the beginning describing the importance of Bhagavatam, then the story of how the Bhagavatam came to be. And basically what happened is Vyasadeva, he'd written so many other Shastras. He's famous for compiling the four Vedas and the Puranas, writing the Mahabharat where, in which the Bhagavad Gita is there. He is the main author, empowered incarnation of Krishna, a Shaktyavish, a, uh, a especially empowered to write and compile the Shastra. He was, a, he was a disciple of, who knows? Narada Muni. Narada Muni, who was a disciple of Brahma. So he's right, you know, very, very uh, authorized, as it were. But then after writing all these other Shastras, which included something called the Karmakanda section of the Vedas, books that describe not pure devotion to Krishna, but how to worship different demigods for getting piety and going to the heavenly planets. It's all part of the Vedas, but it, it's not uh, the ultimate teaching. So he wrote all these books, and then he wasn't quite satisfied. He was a little uneasy. He said, well, I've written all these books, and... What happened? So Narada Muni came down. He understood that his disciple was d distressed. And uh, he explained to him that because you have not written any Shastra, any scripture that wholly and solely glorifies the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, and the devotees and the process of devotion that deals exclusively with that, that's why you're uneasy. Because these other scriptures also advise some other things which will keep you in the material world. I think we can close that because there's going to be noise. And so uh, he had some famous verses there. He says, Nayad vachas chitta padang hare yasho jagat pavitram pragonita karatid tadvaya samtirtam ashanti manasa naranta niramantu shikshaya 
Those words, which may be very perfectly composed in terms of the Sanskrit poetry and the scripture, but don't glorify Lord Hari in the process of devotion, then that's kind of a, like a pilgrimage place for crows. And the, the, the wise devotees, they don't go there. But on the other hand, and this verse was very important for Srila Prabhupada's uh, enthusiasm for writing the Bhagavatam. The next verse says, Tadbhagvasargo, Janataga Viplavo, Yasmin Patishloka Mabadavatyapi, Naman Yanantasi Yashon Kitanayak, Shindvanti Gayanti Gunanti Sarva. Sarva means the sadhus, the great devotees. That literary creation, Vagvasargo in Sanskrit means the creation of words, in other words, a literary work. Uh, Janataga Viplavo, which is designed, which is written for the purpose of reforming this uh, material civilization, because he's really writing this at the dawn of the Kali Yuga. In other words, for the benefit of people's development of bhakti in order to escape from the bonds of birth and death and go back to Godhead. Those words, although every verse may be miscomposed, as opposed to the other poetry, which was very highly uh, you know, uh, nice in terms of literary creation, but it doesn't deal with the essential subject. But this verse, it, it, it glorifies the Lord and his pastimes and the instructions. Then they, the wise will hear and chant it, you see, because uh, they are swans as opposed to the crows, the paramahansas. So Srila Prabhupada, he was, after all, English was his second language, but he, had, he got an order to write in English from his spiritual master, you know. So he wrote, and if you, you have, you, you can have access to facsimiles. I have an original set. It's my, my most precious uh, possession. The original set of the three that he brought with him over on the boat in 1965. It's now six, almost 60 years. And, um, but you see, the English is a little rough. You know, he didn't have an editor. It's a, so, uh, but he wrote anyway, because, it, because Tadvag Vasargo, he says, even if imperfectly composed. And it had tremendous potency in those early days. The devotees were reading it, you know, and they were getting enlivened. So, uh, so now I'd like to skip. So why, so why is it, what's the, the overall importance of this particular um, creation of Vyasadeva? So I'm going to skip over to uh, First Canal, 7th chapter, text 4. Because what, what uh, Narada Muni told Vyasadeva, now you sit in meditation, because you're a great yogi, and you just meditate on Krishna, and all of the inspiration will come to write this book that you're, you're wanting to write. So he sits in meditation, and this is the first candle, seventh chapter, text four. And here's the verse. It starts the, 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 what his experience was. Bhakti yoga in the manasi samyak pranayate yamale apashtat purusham purnam mayam chadadapashriyam. Thus, Vyasadeva fixed his mind, perfectly engaging it by linking it in devotional service of bhakti yoga without any tinge of materialism. And thus he saw the absolute personality of Godhead, Krishna, along with his external energy, which was under full control. So he sees the Lord and he sees his, his, his uh, the maya energy, maya energy, which is the energy of illusion. That's the material energy. I'm going to read just a little portion of the purport. Perfect vision of the absolute truth is possible only by the linking process of devotional service. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. One can perfectly realize the absolute truth, the personality of Godhead, only by the process of devotional service, and one can enter into the kingdom of God by such perfect knowledge. So Prabhupada <laughs> hints about the importance, because the Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita teaches that, but the Bhagavatam teaches in much more detail. Prabhupada would say that the Bhagavatam is the graduate study after the Bhagavad Gita. You see? And then, postgraduate study? Who knows? <laughs> Chaitanya Charitamrita. Lord Chaitanya, book all about Lord Chaitanya. Prabhupada also translated that amazingly, and I had great good fortune of working on that book also. So, now what happens, what's the next verse? Right? Yeah, yeah, by that material energy, yeah, yeah, sammahito jiva atmanam chigunatmakam paropimanote anartam tatkritam chabi padyate. Due to this external energy, which he also saw, Lord Krishna, and then behind him, under control, was the, was the illusory energy, maya. By that external mayak energy, the living entity, that's us, although transcendental by nature to the three modes of material nature, thinks of himself as a material product and thus undergoes the reactions of material miseries. So this is the, the root cause of our suffering in this world. Now, we may think, well, I'm not suffering. 
I'm doing all right. A lot of the people go by, here's our Dwija Mani, one of our main book distributors. He sets up in Balboa Park, and so many people travel by, you know, and say, would you like to come over and see the books? No, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. But nobody's good. <laughs> Nobody in the material world is good. <laughs> Vijay has a, has, a, has a classic line. You may be good, but you can always do better, right? <laughs> so it's, it's a complete illusion to think that we can find any lasting peace or happiness in this material world, in this condition that we're in. Because we all know we're getting older, I mean, getting older and older, and eventually this machine of the body, which is nothing but a vessel where the spirit soul, the eternal soul, is, is, is uh, residing, will fail for one reason or another. We had a big scare a few years ago, this pandemic, and then suddenly everyone became conscious of their breathing, how precious it was to breathe, right? You don't think of it usually. Suddenly, oh, yeah, 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 we have to take so many precautions. So that, but that's, we're always in that condition. There could, be, it's, there could be an earthquake and a tsunami in the next five minutes, and we'll look like two blocks from the ocean, and we'll all be running for, for the park up on a hill. <laughs> so this is the nature of the material energy, is that we're, our position is very tenuous. But we have the human form of life, and we can think about these things, and we can learn and understand how we can act and how we can... We can uh, turn away from Maya and go turn toward Krishna. And then when we leave the body, be it, be it today, tomorrow, and 50 years, we'll not have to come back for another uh, session. You see? But th this, is, this is the basic teaching, the first teaching of Krishna, is that we are eternal. We ourselves, as, as souls, as spirit, we don't die and we don't take birth. What takes birth and dies is our external body. And it's dependent on our state of consciousness, the, 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 the last body. Now, on the, in the animals, they automatically come up. They automatic, their consciousness is more and more uncovered until finally they come to the human form of life. But in the human form of life, because of the, extra, the highest intelligence, we can understand these things and act in such a way that we're not bewildered by the material energy, but rather that we're attracted to Krishna. And that, that if we develop our pure love for Krishna and devotion, then we don't have to come back again in the material body to suffer birth, old age, disease, and death, and the threefold miseries, which includes world war. And, and uh, rather, we go back home, back to Godhead. Now, this isn't just my idea. This is there in the Bhagavatam and all of our, what we call the disip, disciplic succession, coming down from Krishna to Brahma to, to Vyasadeva to Narada, and uh, Narada to Vyasadeva and all the way down. Uh, unbroken this knowledge to Srila Prabhupada and to us. So this is what Prabhupada gave. So now here's, here's the little explanation. So uh, the root cause of material living beings is pointed out in this verse. Uh, due to the external energy, which was under control, mayak energy, the living entity, although transcendental to the three modes of material nature, thinks of himself as a material product and thus undergoes the reactions of material miseries. So we identify with this body. Right? I mean, if I ask, oh, uh, hi, how are you doing? Uh, what's your name? Who are you? You know? So they'll give me a name of the body and where they live, maybe, you know? And uh, if I keep asking, me, what, what do you do? You know, these are, these are all things that relate to this particular body. But this body is very temporary. It's not us. So it's all a complete illusion. We, we, we adopt a false identity and live on the basis of that. And, and this is, uh, unfortunately, cuts us off from Krishna because we're forgetting. He's always with us, but we for, we've forgotten him. And therefore, we need to reform our consciousness so that we, we identify with who we really are and we enter into a world of ever-expanding happiness and peace. This is the only way to really be peaceful in this world because it's so disturbing. But if you have that inner peace of being connected to Krishna, you can become tolerant. And Prabhupada's a famous word, uh, what is that? Uh, <laughs> uh, equipoised. Equipoised, even in happiness and distress, because you, you're on a different plane. So, so this is explaining what happens. So, he's, so Vyasadeva is medita meditating. He sees the external energy and Krishna. And this three modes of nature. We know what they are. We may not know it by that name. The, the mode of passion, where we're ardently desiring some pleasure, some, some material pleasure. And that can be the main mode that we live with. And if we're really into making money, someone goes to college, goes to MIT, graduates. This came up in a recent class. What do you do after you graduate? Oh, 
Now I, I got the, the, the tools. I'll go to Wall Street. I'll become a quant. Quants are got, right, guys who, who, who are able to manipulate the, the, uh, the markets, make money, a lot of money. Why do you want the money? Oh, are you kidding? I'm living here in New York. I can enjoy so much. You know, I can go to the best restaurants and you know, whatever. So that's the mode of passion. That's the, the <laughs> example of the high mode. The mode of goodness is someone's little thoughtful, who, who, who's more interested in maybe philosophy, uh, likes to go out in the woods and peaceful environment and think about deep things and things like that, and uh, is, is more likely to be interested in these kind, of, these kind of books. The mode of ignorance, we're probably familiar with. Oh, you know, it's Saturday morning. Great, I can sleep in. I remember I used to sleep in, even as a, as, as a high school kid. Saturday? Oh, God, let me turn over. I get up at 12 o'clock, noon, right? <laughs> just, you know, just lay back. You know, just take, and uh, it includes uh, infatuation with intoxication and all these different things. It's very dangerous mode of passion. So those are the three modes. It never purely manifests. We'll be in the mode of goodness for a while, then we'll surrender to the mode of passion, get back, you know, like that. So this is it. Three modes of nature. So this, the, the living entity ourselves are by nature transcendental to the modes of nature. But we think of ourselves in terms of the body and the modes of nature. So that's our problem. So, he, so then the next verse. On our topasamam sakshat bhakti yoga man hoksha jay lokasya janatovidvangs chakre sattva sambhata. The material miseries of the living entity, that's us, which are superfluous to him can be directly mitigated by the linking process of devotional service. But the mass of people do not know this, and therefore the learned Vyasadeva compiled this Vedic literature, which is in relation to the supreme truth. So the whole, the whole thing is, is out of compassion, it, it, including Krishna. Why would Krishna come to this planet? He explained, those who know the Bhagavad Gita, at the beginning of the fourth chapter, he says, he tells why. Yadaya dahi dharmasya glani bhavati bharata abhyutana madharmasya tadat manam sajami. Huh? So he says, whenever, whenever there is too much irreligion in the world, because there's something called dharma. This word dharma, of course, has entered the English language long ago. But what does it really mean? What's, what's the root of it? Dharma is rooted in this, this root, this Sanskrit root of the word dri, which means to hold up to sustain our real nature. This is why we have giri dhari. It's the same root. He's holding up the ill, right? So dharma maintains us. If we lose touch with what our real dharma is as living entities, then we suffer. We want to be situated in real dharma. And so the Bhagavatam begins with that practically. The second verse, dharma proja dakaita votra. Here in the Bhagavatam, we have neglected, we've thrown away all of these cheating dharmas, Cheating religions. In other words, religion is not meant to get rich. Is, what, what is it? The, 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 the uh, prosperity theology? No. No. <laughs> Precisely the opposite. We're meant to, to, to become detached from material opulence and things and, and, and become eager and greedy even for spiritual attainments. Greed is good, but only when applied toward becoming greedy to learn more and more about Krishna and our relationship and to act in that relationship. So the, the, uh, the question came, comes up, what is the real Dharma? This is right to be the uh, first chapter of the, uh, of the Bhagavad Gita. It's answered in the, of the Bhagavatam, answered in the second chapter, the first kano. Savai punksam paro dharma yato bhakti at hokshaje. Simple as that. The supreme Dharma... This is the sages in Naimasharanya, Sutta Goswami. He's, he's answering their questions. This is the second time it was spoken. He was in the audience when Shukadev spoke it to Maharaj Parikit. Shukadev learned it from Vyasadev directly, his father. Then he spoke it to Maharaj Parikit, uh, who was cursed to die in seven days. He didn't lament. He didn't, you know. No, he went to, and renounced everything, the whole kingdom, and he sat down by the Ganges, and all these great sages came. And Shukadev came and spoke to Bhagavatam for the first time, or after Vyasadev taught it to Shukadev. Sudha Goswami was in the audience. Now just see the clarity of their minds. 18,000 verses. It's a big book. You know? And uh, he, he heard it and he, he knew it. He heard, he heard the, those 18 verses, then he could repeat it verbatim. This is unheard of, you know, the, the clarity of mind. So 
so, so the the why why did, did the sages gather? Why did Vyasadeva come? Why did Sugadev speak it? All to help us, the residents of Kali Yuga, because they can see it coming, and what are they, what, what guidance they're going to have. So. Uh, the, 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 these miseries of the living entity, birth, death, old age, and disease, and the threefold miseries, let's just contemplate those a minute. You know. who, who can say what, what one of the threefold miseries is? Three Jamani. What is it? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Adi Baltic, yeah. There's a name, Adi Baltic. We're very familiar with it, not by that name. Miseries caused by our own body and mind. We may be, it, it, it's sunny out, it's not too cold out there and everything's fine, I have enough money in the bank, but, you know, my mind is so disturbed by this, by that, this person, uh, you know, has insulted me or one of my, you know, dearest relatives just died. So it's your own mind that's giving you trouble. And of course, we're familiar, the body can, can give you so much trouble. So that's Adi Baltic. Oh, excuse me, that's Adi Atmic. Adi Baltic is others, oftentimes other human beings, a prophet gives the example of bedbugs. I think he experienced that when he was living in Radha You know, Other living beings can cause you trouble. We know that, right? And then, the one that's really been very prominent lately, Adi Divik. Adi Divik. How about that atmospheric river? We're going to get another one? If you're, you know, I, I've lived here 34 years. We had two, set, two months where there was some rain, a little bit of rain, December and January. Those who've been living here. Now, we're in the middle of April, we just drove up to Laguna Beach for a festival. It was the last Saturday, two Saturdays ago. And uh, we're, we're sitting there in the car waiting for Maharaj to come down, and it's raining pretty hard. Then suddenly we get an emergency on everyone get cell phone. Don't, don't drive anywhere. You have flood. It's dangerous. You could lose you. <laughs> Here in San Diego? Hello? You know? It's called San Diego for a reason. Anyway, it's all changed. We're changing it. Pouring out all of these these get you know these greenhouse gases you know, but anyway that's that's Adi Divik, but it's also Adi Baltic because what causes it because we're pouring out all the, you know they, they mix together, so these are uh, e either we're suffering from them or we're, we're there's a threat to be suffering and that itself is also suffering, is a danger and I will mitigate okay I'll get insurance, right insurance is based on fear, fear. I, I got the car insurance, I got the life insurance, I got the health insurance, what other insurance? House insurance? I can't get house insurance? Why not? Because there's too many floods, and the houses are... <laughs> right? Try to get house insurance in, in, in Florida now. You can't. <laughs> so this is, this is the nature of material life, is that it's always, you think you got it together, and suddenly it's not together. So how to uh, mitigate them? By the process of devotional service. But the mass of people do not know this, and therefore the learned Vyasadeva compiled this Vedic literature, which is in relation to the supreme truth. So out of his compassion, he's giving us the method, the scientific method of Krishna consciousness. And Lord Chaitanya based his whole movement on this. You know, he would quote this verse from the 12th canto, near the end. 12th canto first describes all kinds of negative things about the Kali Yuga. In the Kali Yuga, people's memory won't be so great, we won't live very long. You know, we hear someone lives to a hundred. Oh, it's amazing, you know. Previous ages, they lived to a thousand years or even more. And, and, uh, you know, and, and mercy will be decreasing and all of these different things. So basically, it's an ocean of faults. You know, you don't have to, as, believe me, just read the newspaper. And uh, so what is it? Kali Dosha Nide Dosha Nide means an ocean of faults. Kali, Kali Yuga, this Yuga we're living in. Rajan, Asti Eko Mahad Guna, but there's one very good quality, special quality uh, dispensation in this age, which is? Huh? Basically, yes. Asti Eko Mahad Guna, Kirtana Reva Krishnasya Mukta Sangam Param Vrijet. In those two lines, we get our uh, hope. Kirtanad, by Kirtan. We had one before, we'll have one again after this class. Of Krishna, sir, the Hare Krishna mantra. And there's a whole lot we could say just about that particular mantra. Of all the Krishna mantras, this is the Maha mantra. Mukta Sangha Param Vrijet. Mukta means liberation. From what? From Sangha. From, a, from attachment to the things of this world which keep us coming back and back and back. Mukta Sangha. Um, and association with them. 
Param Bajet, and go to the, back to the spiritual world. We're all exiles here. We don't belong here. We were in the spiritual world, and somehow or other we became curious to try to imitate Krishna instead of to serve Krishna. Where the real pleasure in life, the bhaktas will tell you, is to simply have the desire to fulfill Krishna's desires. To be happy in others' uh, happiness, in his happiness. And we have a nice reflection of it here, uh, Prabhupada would always point out. The purest kind of love is the love of a mother for a little child. Imagine the child is a, a few weeks old, doesn't know anything but the mother, you know, and the mother is eager to, you know, feed the child and to keep him warm and to hold him and everything. And so what is, and if the child is peaceful, not crying and tries to smile with that toothless, you know, look, that makes the mother's day, right? <laughs> she, she doesn't, it's no bargain, you know, well, I'll love you if, you know, there's nothing like that. It's just, if you are happy, I'm happy, right? <laughs> Mothers can tell me that's it. And you need that at that time. You need that complete uh, envelopment in the mother's love. So that's, that's essentially the kind of love we need to have for Krishna. I, I always love this little phrase that you don't hear so much because it's in the second canto, a purport. And it's written by Jiva Goswami, one of our great acharyas, disciples of Lord Chaitanya, Six Goswami. And in one of his samdharbas, he writes this, Bhajaniya padama purusha sukamatva swasukatvam. Bhajaniya means the worshipable Padma Purusha, supreme person. That's Krishna. Bhajaniya Padma. Sukha Matra. Only the happiness. Only the pleasure of that supreme person, Krishna. You take your own pleasure only in that. Now that's pretty austere. You know, so, well, what about me? If I'm just taking pleasure in Krishna, well, don't I get a turn? You know. But the, <laughs> but the point is, is that your pleasure is completely covered by that. Eating. Got to eat. Yes, so you cook wonderful dishes for they're cooking them right now in the, in the, in the uh, kitchen. And they're going to be offered nicely, and then we'll have, partake of them. And Krishna will take pleasure in that, because he already ate it all, and he's seeing that his, his devotees are, are... You see that? This is bhakti. It's not a one-way street. It's an exchange of rasa. So, so Srila Prabhupada taught us that, and he taught it on the basis of the Bhagavad Gita, and especially the Srimad Bhagavatam. So... Uh, I'm just going to read this little section of the purport and then we'll conclude in a few minutes and you, you can ask some questions. So Vyasadeva saw the all-perfect per, uh, personality of Godhead. This statement suggests that the complete unit of the personality of Godhead includes his parts and parcels, us. He saw, therefore, his different energies, namely the in internal energy, the marginal energy. We are the marginal energy. It means that we can go either way. We can turn our, turn our attention to Krishna and his uh, bhakti again, or we can keep turning our attention toward the material energy. But we know now, we should know from the Shastra, that uh, turning our attention and our hopes on the material energy is a, is a loser's proposition. We'll always be betrayed. We'll never be able to be happy. Old age, disease, and death will come if we're fortunate. It can, you know, we could die early. And, and uh, then we don't know what, what kind of body we're going to get. So that's not a very good idea. But if we turn our attention toward Krishna, then the whole thing will be uh, resolved. He saw the different energies, marginal, internal, external, and he saw the different incarnations, and he saw that the conditioned souls will be will, uh, will be wielded by the external energy, and at last he saw the remedial measure for the conditioned souls, namely, the process of devotional service to the Lord. It is a great transcendental science and begins with the process of hearing and chanting the name, fame, glories, etc. of the Supreme Personality of God. So now, here's the benefit of hearing the Bhagavatam. This is right here in the seventh chapter, seventh verse of the Bhagavatam. Yasyam vaishu yamanayam krishne parama purushe bhakti utpadyate pungsa shoka moha bayapaha Simply by one's giving oral reception to this Vedic literature, the feeling for loving devotional service to Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, sprouts up at once to extinguish the fire of lamentation, illusion, and fear. A little a few words from the purport. The importance of hearing is mentioned here in connection with attaining the highest perfection of life, namely getting free from the three material pangs, threefold miseries. Everyone is full of lamentation at every moment. He's after the mirage of illusory things, and he's always afraid of his supposed enemy. These are the primary symptoms of material disease. So that's shoka, lamentation, moha, illusion, and bhaya, bhaya is fear. 
So it's mentioned herein, it's promised herein, that simply by hearing the Bhagavatam, one gets attachment for the Supreme Personality of God, Sri Krishna, and as soon as this happens, the symptoms of the material disease disappear. So Krishna is naturally attractive. His name, Krishna, Krishna is, is ba- the, word, uh, the word Krish means karshati, to attract. And na is the, the, the bliss. Krishna is all attractive, and he's full of bliss, and we can share in that happiness if we simply connect to him through the process of devotional service, beginning with chanting the, his holy name. Everything begins there. And w- when Krishna understands, he's in our heart, every one of us. He understands, oh, they're listening to my glorification, you see? Then he starts purifying the heart. This is in the second, second chapter, first canto. Shrinvatam sukata krishna punya shavana kirtana ridyandaksto yabhadrani vidunoti suritsatam. So Krishna in the heart, when we have some attraction for hearing about him, and you've all got some attraction, otherwise you wouldn't come here. So that's good. Now we should cultivate it as much as possible. So Swakata, his own kata, he's hearing Swakata, punya shavana kirtana, which brings piety just by hearing and chanting. You don't have to spend a lot of money or go here or go anywhere. Just open the Bhagavatam and read Bhagavad Gita or any of Prabhupada's book. Riddhyan Taksto, Krishna is situated in the heart. Abhadrani Vidunoti. Vidunoti literally means to cleanse away. And this is, is, is directly related to Lord Chaitanya's process. Chaito Dharpana Marjanam. Those who know this verse, this is the first verse in his eight verses of instruction on the holy name. And by this chanting, which we'll do in a few minutes again, he, our hearts are becoming cleansed. Means we're becoming less attached to all of the variety of, 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 of uh, 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 so-called pleasures in, in material world that involves sense gratification, and more and more attached to Krishna by just by hearing his name. We're becoming attracted. The, the 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 epitome of all beauty, uh, knowledge, strength, fame, uh, the renunciation. I may have left one out. Aishra uh, rasya samagra viryasya power strength. So, and, and you listen to his pastime. Bhagavatam is famous for that. Tenth canto. Krishna's all attractive pastimes. His childhood pastime where he, he covers his divinity and his mother binds him up. It's so delightful. It's so, so uh, heart uh, warming and attractive. And so Krishna, he, he comes here specifically to, to attract us back to him. And we should take advantage of it. This that brings up one, one other verse I'd like to quote. And that is, from the uh, Bhagavad Gita, the 16th chapter. Now those who are familiar with the Bhagavad Gita know that the 16th chapter mostly deals with description of the demoniac, you know, thing which we want to try to avoid, the demoniac personality. And so what is, you know, like for instance, Hiranyakashipu, those who are really, really, really want to, uh, something fascinating, you can listen to the morning program online if you can't come here at uh, 7.50. We're now in the chapter where Hiranyakashipu meets Lord Nishringadev, and we know what happens. But it's a very dramatic uh, fight between Nishringadev and Hiranyakashipu, and Hiranyakashipu will be vanquished, and Pallad Maharaj will be saved and exalted. So what Krishna describes in that, that chapter, uh, the divine and demoniac, and he says, yes, and those who are demoniac means this declared enemy of God and God's devotees, uh, he throws them down and he defeats them and sends them basically to hellish existence. So he says, now he winds up the chapter. There are three gates leading to this hell that I just described, which is very, you know, we have description, fifth canon. Now you don't want to go there. So he says, what's the gates? Uncontrolled lust, anger, and greed. Uh, and and one, one who can, uh, you know, avoid those three gates and c- control the senses and undergo, then he, uh, is, is, was it, uh, uh, someone who avoids these three, under instruction of the guru, how to mitigate those, then you perform activities for your ultimate benefit, shreyas. And, and what's the result? Tatoyati Param Gatim. In the end, you go back to Godhead. Then he gives a warning. He's bringing in the Shastra. Here's the Shastra. This is why I'm quoting this. Yakshastra Vidam Utsrija, Vartate Kama Karataha, Nasa Siddhim Avapnoti, Nasukam Param Gatim. So now comes the alternative. 
said, but those who disregard the instructions of Shastra, of, of Shastra means the revealed scripture for our benefit, and simply act according to our own whims, we get neither perfection nor happiness, nor do we achieve the supreme goal. Then, the last verse, this is why I'm quoting, we have to have pramana. What do we use as evidence for what we should do for our own best interest? We all have that, you know, maybe some combination of sites on the internet. It could be what our mother told us. It could be different things we learned. In the, but we're all taking some evidence for what we should, uh, the best thing we should do in the world. So the, the, the Bhagavad Gita says that should be the Shastra. Uh, Tasma, therefore, Shastra Pamanam Te Karya Karya Vavastato Gyatva Shastra Vidhan Uktam Karma Karta Miharasi. Very important verse of Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, one should find genuine Shastra, which is what Srila Prabhupada gave us, commentated Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, etc. Tasma Shastra Pamanam Te. Karya Karya Vavastato, to determine what to do and what not to do. And when you think about it, our whole life is simply doing one thing and not another. Right? When we do it here, you came here, you didn't go a hundred, I always point this out, forgive me, a hundred more feet down there, you'd be in the bar. Right? Complete contrast. <laughs> you wouldn't get any instruction on Bhagavad, Bhagavatam from there, I guarantee it. So, so, Karya Karya Vavastato, and doing one thing and not the other, this is what, what any process is. This is a marga, bhakti marga, a path. So to follow this path of bhakti, of, of, of bhakti, bhakti yoga, for our ultimate good and, and, and uh, achieving perfection in the human form of life, therefore we need instruction, because we don't know. So that comes from Shastra and from those who are following Shastra. So Shastra, Guru, Sadhu, these are the three pillars of uh, instruction for what we should what we should do. So then he says, Gatva Shastra Vidhana and understanding what the Shastra says in terms of what to do and not what to do. Karta Karma Miharasi, you should do it as a matter of duty, which means that it's not going to comport with what you feel like doing or what not, not doing at any different moment. Just like the first thing, you know, if you join the ashram, used to be if you wanted to be a Hare Krishna, you had to join the ashram. And that meant moving in. And the first thing you got to get, get used to is getting up at 4 o'clock at the very latest. I mean, I, that for me, that's too late if you're going to get there at 4.30. You know? You're used to getting up at 7. Now you got to get up at 4. You know? I can't, I can't handle that. You know? So you're going to join in. But that, that's, that's okay. You know? I got to try to do that. You know? So what happens when you get up? Cold shower. Ah! <laughs> I never took a cold shower in my life, right? <laughs> But if you think about it, you know, if you're going to, all these great sages, they took the bath in the river. Sometimes it's cold, you know, go up to, to Allahabad or the Prayag in the wintertime when they have the Kumbh Mela. And the whole point is to bathe in the Triveni at a certain point when it's January and it's freezing. Yeah, but I want liberation. Okay, so I'll go, you know. So the idea is, yes, it may not comport with what you feel like doing, but that's the whole point. What we feel like doing is taking us birth after birth, you know, to, to a bad situation. So accepting some austerity, you know. We don't have to go off to the Himalayas. We don't have to sit for hours and hours in meditation, which we can't do anyway. That's the sixth chapter. But we do have to accept some things that we want to, don't want to do, and we have to give up some things that we want to do. But it's worth it. And the thing is, you find that Krishna will help you. After a little while chanting Hare Krishna and practicing devotional service, yeah, I really didn't want to you know, smoke cigarettes after all. I'm so glad I was able to give that up. You know, and drinking, who needs that? You know? <laughs> even, even illicit sex. Prabhupada would quote this verse by Yamunacharya, the uh, guru of Ramanujacharya. He says, Yadavadi Mamacheta, Krishna Pada, the Vinde, Navadamanasadhaman, Yuditam Rantum Asi, Tadabadi Batanadi, Sangame, Smarihamane, Bhavati Mukavakado, Sister Nishtivan. So, so Yamunacharya uh, was a student, and then he, be, then he became a king for a while, and then he, be, then he gave that up and he took sannyas and became Yamunacharya, spiritual master of Ramanujacharya. So now, in this Yamunacharya phase, he's remembering some, some of the things that happened when he was a king, and you know, he said, oh, ever since I've been tasting moment to moment the pleasure of serving the lotus feet of Nanda Nandana Krishna, you know, whenever I think of uh, all this experience with my harem, you know, I won't go into detail, he, his, face, he, his, his mouth turns to disgust and he spits at it. 
Papa says it so charmingly, and he spites at the thought. He spites spit. So he, he became detached, vairagya, because he attained raga for Krishna, raga anuga, you know, rasa. So the more that we can become attracted to Krishna, basically by chanting the holy name, uh, the more that we'll uh, get detached from the things that are really holding us down, our material attachments, and become free from that. So that so much of that we can find right in the Bhagavatam. Tenth can was full with Krishna's uh, pastimes and so many instructions also. I'm just reading in the Krishna book, which is the Tenth Canals, probably uh, a, a loose translation, or what do you call it, a uh, summary study. Chapter 87, these prayers of the personified Vedas, it's so illuminating, huge. It takes up like half of the, the, the last volume. Uh, but it's great, you know, the, the, these, these verses. And they have wonderful meter. I'll give you a sample. Does anyone know what it means? Can you translate? Okay. So what he's saying there is that my dear Lord, the, the, the personified Vedas are praying to Mahavishnu. He says, oh, my dear Lord, the human form of life is most suited to developing this devotional service to you. And when one does that, then the, the body itself becomes his best friend. Usually the body is holding you down, you know, in sources of misery. No, because it's a paraphernalia for serving. The ears for hearing, the eyes for the Lord, the eyes seeing, you know, every sense can be used in service. But alas... Uh, those who don't, do not take their pleasure in serving you with their senses, they worship the impermanent. They, they worship the mammon, right, in the Bible? Which is a source of death for the soul. Of course, the soul can't be killed, but it's con condemnation. And those people, they wander amongst different species and taking you know, fearful forms of, of life. So this is really the, the sort choice we have. We should hear the, the Bhagavatam from the pure source as given by Srila Prabhupada and his sincere followers. And the other books that Prabhupada gave us, Bhagavad Gita, the, uh, of course, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And in, uh, you can read the TLC. Prabhupada put, put the teachings of Lord Chaitanya in one volume before the translation, and that, that's a nice summary. And the Nectar of Devotion. The Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, those four books, and of course we have others, the Nectar of Instruction and the Isha Upanishad rounds out you know, pretty much Prabhupada's corpus. Uh, they provide perfect instruction for us. We can, we can make uh, you know, advancement in devotional service, and if you're really interested, we have beads. You can learn how to chant on the Japa beads if you're not already chanting. So that's, that's uh, my little uh, plug for the Bhag Bhagavatam. If you're interested in getting the Bhagavatam tonight, what do we have? We put a set of Srimad Bhagavatams on the altar. Now? Yeah. Oh, okay. There they are. Spread out. Maybe you could offer it to the audience. There's the Bhagavatam. And here's the Bhagavatam. And we have a, a go-down. You know what a go-down is? <laughs> we have sets of Bhagavatams, if you're interested. It's, it, 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 it actually um, purifies the home. You put it up in a nice, nice spot. You know, It's just like a deity. And, and it's, it's very auspicious. And then you, you can have classes on it every day. You can read part of it you know, every day. And it's just tremendously enlivening and enlightening. I highly recommend it. OK, any questions before we have our second kirtan and our feast, your feast? Yes. But we have right, right there's a, 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 a mic for you, right behind you. And if you just press that button and hold it, my friend Chad will show you how to do it. No, it's right here. He's the question. <laughs> Yeah, makes it has to has to really hold it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, very um, the explanation you provided, the summary you have provided, really appreciate it. Hare Krishna. I, I was just wondering. Um, one of the things you mentioned about this, and this is coming from Bhagavatam. This is the human life, is the opportunity. Yes. For us to actually come out of the, the, this uh, vicious cycle of the life and death. Yeah, birth and death. Right, birth and death. Um, what makes us to think that human life is the, on the top of the intellectual level or spirituality? <laughs> and, and, and 
I was probably some some animal or plant or something, right, before coming to this birth. No, probably what exactly I did during that birth to come to this human life, well, which is giving me opportunity. Okay, let me let me see if I can explain. This is the way I understand it from Srila Prabhupada's instruction and the, and the Shastra, is that uh, originally we were with Krishna in the spiritual world. This is how Prabhupada described it. This is the way we're going with it, is that it, we were with Krishna. But because we're marginal, you know, we're very minute. We're as spiritual as Krishna is, by, in essence. We're unborn, we're eternal and everything. We have his qualities in minute degree. But because of our infinitesimality, if that's a word, uh, we have the tendency to also be overwhelmed by the material energy. <laughs> we turn away, literally turn away from Krishna, and we become absorbed in this world, trying to imitate. And that's the beginning of our birth and death and our sojourn here. So, now in that light, you, you, you may ask me the question, well, why does Krishna let us do that? I mean, why doesn't he protect us from that instead of allowing us to suffer like this? And the answer is that the whole meaning of the spiritual world is this, uh, this idea of love, loving exchange. Love has to be freely given, otherwise it's not love. Prabhupada famously said, or I, I, I remember it, it always this, Krishna doesn't want us to love him at the, at the, uh, the tip of a revolver, love me or else. That's not love. You see? So we have to have freedom. We have to have this minute independence. So that minute independence is what got us into trouble because we, uh, we forgot Krishna and we try to uh, imitate Krishna and that's when we get covered. We come down. So, and uh, unless we get the association of a sage who can teach us, you know, then we can go down, down, and down, and down. Now, what I think you may be referring to at the beginning is that, well, what about all these higher beings? You know, why is the human life the greatest life? The reason is because we're not so powerful. Because we're, we can easily understand our own fragility. It's not so easy for Indra, right? Indra, I mean, Indra, he, he's, he's placed a prominent role in this temple. It's Indra who sent those storms and all the, 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 to try to punish the Brijbasis for ignoring his festival, you know? And Krishna had to lift the hill for seven days. That's what you see on each corner, you'll see him lifting that hill. So that Indra is, is, you could say, he's a higher type of being than human beings. Yeah, but, he, but, be, but because of he, he's in that, he, it's more likely that he'll stay attached to his, his uh, position and his role. Whereas here on Earth, we're in the middle region, and we can easily learn, yes, it's not a good place to be, especially this age. So Kali Yuga, especially this Kali Yuga, in which Lord Chaitanya appeared, Krishna appeared as Lord Chaitanya, is a special Kali Yuga. Once in a day of Brahma. Who wants to give me that calculation of how long Brahma's 24 hours is? It's, let's, let's, I'll round it out. It's more than 8 billion years, okay? And, and Krishna comes to, to this planet once in 8 billion years, and after he comes, he comes as Lord Chaitanya. So, uh, so have we won the lottery or what? Five thousand, five hundred years ago, and a few more, Krishna came as Lord Chaitanya and brought the chanting. You see? So therefore, in, in the Bhagavatam 11th candle, there's a verse which I won't recite, sh showing that Lord Chaitanya is the incarnation for this age, the Yuga Avatar. A few verses later, it talks about the glories of this Kali Yuga that we're in. Kaling Sabhaji Yantyarya Gunagya Sarabhagana Yatra Sankirtane Naiva Sarva Swarto Abhilabhyate, which means those who are wise, the Aryans, they worship this Kali Yuga. Because in this Kali Yuga, simply by congregational chanting of the holy name, which we're all going to do in a few minutes, no prerequisite, doesn't matter, you know, man, woman, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you can chant it, you can take it. Uh, we can achieve all of the goals of the soul, Sva'arta. So, the answer is that we automatically, the way I understand it, we automatically come up to the human form of life. But when we do, we need to be fortunate enough to come in contact with a pure devotee, someone who can give us the seed of bhakti yoga and that we can then cultivate by hearing and chanting and following. And that's especially available in this age. So, and, and then if we don't do that and we just act like animals, we can become animals, then it's built in. They don't have to do anything, they don't know anything, they just automatically, the consciousness becomes less covered, less covered, and they come back up to the human form. So we, we could have been human beings many, many, many times before, but in this life, because of Srila Prabhupada's great effort, you know, he's created a situation called the Internet Society of Krishna Consciousness where we can get the genuine thing that can save us from many more births. 
So it's an automatic process. Once you, but the human life, right in the Bhagavad Gita, it says, Love dvas durdam amidam bahusam bhavante manushyam artadam anityam apiya dhira turnam yatetana patena namrityava nikshaya saya vishaya kolasarvataksyad. You have attained this very rare human form of life, sudurlam amidam, after many, many births, bahusam bhavante manushyam, which is artadam, means that it can give the ultimate goal of, of freedom from birth and death and return back to God. But it's temporary, like all other forms, so one has to be dira, has to be very thoughtful, and, what, and, then, and then what? Turnam, without wasting any time, immediately, because you get spaced out and you get distracted. Turnam, yateta, strive, as long as you're still alive, to, for the ultimate nikshayasa, which is purity going back to Godhead, resuming our relation with Krishna, our eternal relation. Uh, because after all, we've experienced these, these, all these sense gratifications in the different varieties and all these other forms of life. And what has it gotten us? Another birth, another birth, another birth. So now let's use this birth. Let's cash in the lottery ticket. We're, we all have, we know what to do. The, the Bhagavatam is available. You see, if you can't buy it, just go online. You know, it's, it's, it, <laughs> I recorded the whole Gita. If anyone wants it, just write to me. You can hear the recording. You know, it's all available. So let's not waste, we, we shouldn't waste any more time in this uh, trying to enjoy these senses, which is just a ticket to a lot of suffering. Question, another question. All right, that's time. Time is of the essence here. Okay, we have a little more uh, time. Okay, uh, Hare Krishna. Oh, Hare Hare uh, it was a nice lecture, thank you. Hare Krishna. I, I was thinking, like, uh, the animals... The souls which are like the species which are below human species and then the species which are above human species, they generally don't, uh, so, uh, don't get the fruits of their karma, of the previous life. Uh, probably, um, no, let, let me put it this way. They cannot generate new karma. No, no, in the lower animals they have no karma. No, they have no karma, right? Yeah, yeah. So, they just automatically going from birth to birth. And to human beings, because we have the reason we can do the right thing or not, they don't they work by instinct. You know, that mosquito is not getting karma from biting you. He may get a slap and move to his next body, right. but, but that was already programmed in anyway. <laughs> right. No, no karma for the animals. <laughs> uh, right. So, so um, considering that, the animals, uh, if you see different animals, they have different lives. Like, for example, one dog to another dog, somebody dies in an accident, somebody, like one of the dogs, yeah. just lives. So what differentiates the animals' lives? <laughs> Basically, you know, the animals can't really practice Krishna consciousness. Prabhu would say, if a dog comes in here, he can't, we won't stay for class. We have enough trouble just trying to keep, you know, human beings in here. Uh, <laughs> but still, they can benefit because, like, I, I like this example. It, it wasn't Narada Muni is the name of the cat. It was uh, Naratam. We had a cat. Some, the devotees gave him the name Naratam. I said, you can't give a Naratam name for a cat. That's exalted soul, but it's stuck. And we had, so I would, I would, <laughs> we have something called kheer. Anyone who, <laughs> we, we boil down the milk and sweeten it, and it's very delicious, you know. And so that's offered every day, Mahaprasadam for the devotee, for the deed. So it comes out, and I would put a little bit of that on a, on a uh, leaf, and I would leave it for Naratam, the cat. And uh, he, would, he would take it, he loved it, you know, it was great. So that cat is benefiting from taking Mahaprasadam, unknowingly, unknowingly. But still, it, it, the, the, the influence is so strong that there's some benefit. And you can, uh, Bharatas Thakur recommended, you know, chant loudly. Go out in the forest and chant loudly, because even the trees and the animals will benefit from his chanting, of course, his pure chanting. But uh, so, so they can benefit a little bit, and it can help them to, in the next life, there'll be, a, you know, a cat in the home of a devotee, you know, you know. So all that is auspicious. But we can willfully do it. In other words, we can actually make such advancement that we can go back to God in this life. Or, and this is so encouraging, Krishna says, Neha Brikamanashosti Pratyavayana that there's no loss or diminution. Whatever we do in Krishna consciousness, even attending one class or one kirtan, uh, is it good for our next life? In other words, we're not going to be animals. We'll come back again and we'll attend two kirtans next time. In other words, we begin where we left off. And where anything material, Bezos, tr billions, he's going to leave it here when he goes. doesn't matter. <laughs> In other words, anything you have materially is, is staying, staying back. But your spiritual assets will stay with you because it's part of your soul. And your soul doesn't die. You know. 
All right, we need to adjourn and have a little kirtan. Thank you so much. Anyone who's interested in uh, getting one tonight, our, our Dwijamani Babu will be happy to see that. Uh, we have announcements. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs>